Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of our Static Industry Mod Pack playthrough. Hope today is going swell and well for you so far. As for me, you could say things are heating up because the smoke stacks. Anyways, without further ado, let's dive into another episode. <laughs> So yeah, we've got a bit of an actual factory built up now. I'm not going to lie, this did take some time. Uh, more than likely, I'll probably keep taking Saturdays and Sundays off. My family's out of school, out of work, that kind of stuff. So we tend to hang out on the weekend. So unless I just have like an extra video or something, um, where I get ahead or, you know, something along those lines, more than likely we'll continue to take uh, Saturdays off. Now, the factory is not finished quite yet. Obviously, the roof isn't built in. I kind of need to get some lights for up there. I'm thinking glowstone, but, uh, you know, I could be convinced otherwise. Uh, otherwise, I don't know why I did a D to otherwise. <laughs> Anyways, over here, we're gonna have our large steam boilers, hence the uh, smokestacks coming out the top up there. And yeah, this is basically where most of our steam production from now to kind of the mid to late game is gonna go, or come from rather. And uh, maybe we work on getting that uh, up and going today. We're gonna be going through a lot of what I have set up already in here because I believe that all of this is um, pretty important. Now, why is that not? receiving copper because mm -mm. it should unless I don't have any copper in my system but that that seems a little crazy hold on I have been using this slime sling to get back and forth across my base now do I actually n I don't have any copper I do have copper uh, I wonder if I take this out and then put it back will that put it back over there Oh, goodness. One bad thing about the slime sling, sometimes you can get lost in the sauce of the base if you just land in the wrong space. Um, but yeah, it's, it's how it goes. So let's see. Maybe I need at least one copper. Oh, no, there it goes. So I guess the rest of that copper was just previously in the storage system. Anyways, um, yeah, we've, we've made quite a lot of progress just due to being off the weekend and me um, continuing to work on this. I've kind of been waiting on Oplisync to get updated, but it's not been, so we're, we're just waiting. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of stuff to go over today. We have been slowly kind of tearing this spot apart. Um, maybe we'll find a future use for it, but all the machines we've essentially moved it over to the actual factory i've also done a little bit more decorating with some like planters and road barriers and um we've set this up which is going to be kind of our centralized fluid storage area hence why i'm starting to build like an under area to it because obviously there's a lot of spaghetti noodling <laughs> going on underneath here but that's that's to be expected in a pack where you want a base that's kind of spread out and you want to get everything where you want to get it but leave stuff in its spot hopefully that makes sense so um not a great place to start here other than i guess at the factory but there is going to be a lot of creosote used in the uh, coming future so just be prepared for that i need to get the rest of these machines built out i think we're going to end up hitting eight on these so that hopefully will be enough to keep our steam boilers going i'd like to have two large steam boilers um, fueling us for the mid game here so um, let's start in the factory now you might have noticed that all of the storage madness in front of or rather behind the quarry is gone and that's because we're basically pumping all of the items over down under and up into this drawer access point so if I break this oh shit really shouldn't have fell through that let's see there we go um you can see the items are coming in from the bottom, going into the drawer access point, and then being separated, organized, however you want to say it, into three drawers because we have 10 outputs, obviously. And then here we have a large steam macerator. Now, my plan was run everything into the steam macerator. It can 
essentially break down items eight at a time. But there kind of lies a problem in this, um, in the fact that it only breaks down eight items at a time. It doesn't break down three, it can't break down five. So once the items are in the hatches, it's, it's kind of hard to get them back out, I've realized. And it's kind of difficult to put just eight items into a hatch. So if you guys or gals know a way to automate numbers, because um, typically I would use laser IO, but laser IO is not in this pack, so obviously not available. Um, but yeah, just putting eight items, I've not found a good counting filter. Now there is this max count filter, but I don't think this is actually used for sorting purposes. So um, yeah, if y'all if y'all know a way to only transfer eight, and I don't mean eight at a time, but eight period and stop or some way to do that. I'm all ears. Um, I tried looking into create and all kinds of stuff, but I can't figure out a way to just do a counting filter. So for the time being, I just have to grab what I want from over here, throw it in and let it be processed through, which isn't really that bad because we do two stacks at a time, which is a lot of um, items. So if we take stack of coal and throw that in and stack of iron throw that in and the large steam macerator is going to start chugging along here's the item output hatch um, but essentially it's also being ran underground and that is going into the item input hatch in this steam macerator um, because of course everything basically has to be macerated twice when you're looking at the ore blocks so if we type in ore Come to iron real quick. You can see it goes into the macerator to get you raw iron, and then you put that back into a macerator to get you the iron dust. And um, so, yeah. So the coal is going through the large steam macerator. It's coming out into this item output hatch, and then it's being piped over and into another um, drawer access point, which is where all this is coming from. This drawer access point is also connected to our storage system via an inventory cable connector onto the drawer access point. So this gives actual priority to our drawers here. Whenever I pull something out of, from the system, it'll pull from here and it'll also place it here. Hold on, it's getting uh, getting in the dark hour. Let's take a little snooze. So yeah, a lot of cabling has been done in between episodes and that's honestly probably the majority of what has been done. That and building the factory, most everything else Probably would have been relatively shortly done had I just not cared and just placed it all willy-nilly or whatever. Uh, but again, I'm trying to make this kind of like a factory-esque uh, style base. So, goes from quarry manually, as of right now, into macerator, automatically into another macerator. And then if it's something like iron, as we'll see whenever we get to it, which looks like we're getting there now... Just got to get through the rest of this. We have it set up from this item pipe to specifically send the dust that we want and the items that we want into a large steam furnace, which does the same thing essentially as a large steam macerator. And that is it smelts eight items at a time. And again, no less, no more, always eight. So kind of the same problem. But really, if you can filter, if you can find a way to filter it specifically for the first machine, the other two machines will work fine because it'll already be filtered into an eight, you know, number gap. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is say, send items into here, but whenever this number would hit anything other than eight, essentially anything less than eight, stop sending it. That's a difficult thing to do without laser IO, at least to my knowledge, or Ender IO, or any of those other highly complex um, logistic systems, right? So... If you know a way, cool. If not, it's it's all right. I know you could probably do a vanilla Minecraft like hopper type system, maybe, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm not trying to do that. So here's everything that we've been processing down, and some of them I leave in dust form, and that's because I want to combine them. So copper, I have smelted it and dust, and really you can just pop one of these out whenever I want to smelt it. I can just put the item filter on here and remove it from down below here right so that would work um however you want to set that up 
it's fine. But I recommend leaving some of them in dust form because, again, copper and tin, you need them in dust form in order to make bronze until you get the alloy smelter, which we're not currently at. So if we just leave them in dust form, I can go put them in a mixer and be good to go. Um, coal is fine to stay in a dust form. You don't need to like recompact it unless you're making torches, but I use charcoal for that, so that's fine. Lead and tin will end up making soldering alloy, which we'll need in the future for automating stuff because it goes into the assembler. And then this is how you actually make, you know, automating drill heads and rotors and gears and all this kind of stuff, which we definitely want to get into automating because honestly doing gears and drill heads and all that, it's just not very fun. And it's something that you need to continuously do in order to keep your quarry going to keep items going. So it's kind of a, a big cyclic thing that, uh, you know, constantly needs to be worked on, but that's, that's kind of the beauty of it. Now, the large steam macerator and the large steam furnace have been mentioned in the quest book already. We just simply passed on by them. So here's the large steam furnace off to the side from the Coke oven. And it just basically tells you tired of waiting on your normal furnace. This one does eight at a time for the essentially the same cost. So it is very, very efficient. Um, and then as far as the that's the steam boiler, where oh, here's the steel or steam macerator. And again, same thing, processes eight items at the same time that it would take to process two. Oh, I'm going to turn it away so we don't have to hear that anymore. And uh, we've done a couple more things in the quest pack, just kind of moving forward. So we did go ahead and make the steel wire mill just so we can start moving into cables and basically trying to get up here to basic machine holes as this will push us into the electric age over here. And again, the whole point of this is we want to get to the assembler so we can actually start automating the more annoying task, right? Speaking of automating the more annoying task, we have the wall of processing over here. Those of you that watched F2B Neotech, this will probably look pretty familiar to you. Essentially what this setup is, is processes any and all items down to the, the base forms that we might need. So this one does copper bolts as it's a cutting machine into a cutting machine. This one is a compressor into a compressor, which gives us our curved plates, right? You can see here a compressor of a copper plate and you can get to a copper plate from a normal compressor. So essentially this just makes all of our little bobs and bits and doodads that we need for crafting rotors and gears and all that kind of stuff. So we have plates, curved plates, um, what are these? Copper bolts. These should be the rings and this should be the rods. So this is and isn't as complicated as I'm making it. So if you wanna have this automated in this sort of nifty tiny little space, yeah, it can get a little complicated, but if you kind of move your machines out a little bit, it's uh, it's less so. But I like to have the processing wall compacted as possible. And if we come around here, oh my goodness, there's so many spaghetti noodles, we could probably feed um, an entire basketball team. Um, so yeah, a lot of stuff going on here, but just try to keep things as simple as possible and you'll be okay. So let's take a very simple setup right over here, just going into the steel compressor and coming back out of it. This makes our plates. So essentially we have a item pipe coming from a barrel going into the steel compressor. And it does have an item auto extraction, but I've not bothered to test how it um, how it prioritizes, right? Because if it has an auto export, that's cool. But if it auto exports to this steel compressor over here, then I don't want that. If it auto exports down below, that's cool. Um, and maybe I can set that up with the wrench. Maybe that's what this whole little thing is about. But again, I'm not cared to do that and maybe that could save us some item pipes here in the back like all these red ones it's whatever and again probably same thing here in the item pipes in the middle but i'm not sure how how would you set this interaction once both machines are down because you can't reach the top or the bottom you know what i mean so I, this is what i have working yes there's probably a better less spaghetti way but it works and so that's all i really care about and once i hide it it will just be flat on the front so comes from the barrel into the steel compressor, out from the steel compressor into another barrel. And here is the fluid pipe running all of the steam into it. And of course it's connected over, under, and into everything else. The problem with this comes in with the lubricant. 
because, um, well, obviously you need lubricant in the cutting machines and the cutting machines are kind of spaced out in a weird way. So lubricant, I've actually ran all the way underground and we'll go check out where that end point is here in just a second. But yeah, so this just makes processing a lot easier. I no longer need a hammer unless I need something absolutely immediately. Um, and then I just have to finish setting these last couple up, but I figured we could do that together so you can kind of see how I'm working with everything. And that has already processed everything through. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, two stacks just gone through like it's nothing. So let's continue on over here. I have worked a little bit on this. Um, I need to close this door. On the villager area, working on getting some more people back in. I did get the toolsmith back to master level. Um, the florist, I'm not going to lie, I really expected him to sell um, flowers. And I was going to use that for da, but so far he doesn't not that i've seen the industrialist i talked about him a little bit last time so yeah see he, he just doesn't work and this is the modern industrialization villager mod um villager villager mod <laughs> you know what i'm saying but it doesn't appear to be working so i'm not sure if that's intentional or unintentional but uh it is the way it is so for our lubricant if you'll remember lubricant is made by using well, a couple different methods, but the method we're using is creosote and redstone. We haven't gotten to naphtha yet, and we aren't using plant oil because, again, we're not to that point. So this will make 500 millibuckets of lubricant, or essentially half of a single bucket. And we're basically just taking all of our creosote. We're pumping it into this fluid tank. This is going to be our creosote backup, but obviously it's not backed up because we have a lot of... Um, lubricant that kind of needs to be made first which this bronze mixer down here is making for us so the kind of bad thing about the fluid pipes is the fact that they have such a large um, network hold space so this this pipe system here can hold 101 buckets which means it's not going to back up until there's 101 buckets in this and then it'll start filling up our fluid tank and it'll come back down here and fill up this bronze mixer. Also, a bug that I've noticed with, um, and maybe it's not a bug, maybe I'm just not seeing when I do it, but a bug that I've noticed with uh, modern industrialization is whenever a machine kind of gets filled up, it puts that liquid back into the sort of input side. Even though there was no input for this machine, this is coming out of, this is going in, this is going in. Yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm not real sure as to how or why this lubricant got backed up in there. But yeah, so creosote's going into the large fluid tank, then it's coming back out of it and going into the bronze mixer, which we have preloaded with redstone, thanks to this basic inventory hopper from Tom Simple Storage Mod. And the way that you set the uh, filter is you simply hold the item in your hand and right click. I'm not gonna do it with an empty hand because it'll clear it and then I'll have to go get more redstone and yada, yada, yada. But yeah, so that's um, that's how this whole automation setup is working and how we're gonna have infinite lubricant once we uh, kind of keep pushing with it. Now, the whole process for this is having coal dust being inputted into the Coke ovens. And eventually we'll automate this and we will automate pulling the coke out because that is what's going to power our um, large steam boilers. So let's take a little snooze here. So essentially it will all end up getting used. All this backup and all this manual insertion extraction stuff will be... Um, automated but that's that's what we're slowly working on right now is sort of getting into the age of industry of actual industry where we're able to automate things throw some stuff in a barrel and just kind of walk away so for example if i wanted to grab some iron out of here i can grab two stacks throw it in the top it's going to start being compressed down in our steel compressor and it'll be outputted into the barrel down below. So I can just kind of leave that there and um, go on about my way. Hold on. Oh, sorry about that call from the wife. Um, what was I doing? <laughs> it's funny how that'll that'll just completely throw you off track. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're moving into the age of automation. And um, that's basically what we're going to continue to 
persist on here. Now, I have been waiting to accept all of my quest rewards for you guys and gals, but we're going to try and get into the basic machine hole today so we can start moving forward with power. LV Steam Turbine, that's going to be our first form of actual power, not just using steam to power stuff, but using power to power stuff. <laughs> I think it's EU is what they use for, yeah, EU per tick, which can get a little confusing because they also mention EU with their steam stuff but that's because some steam stuff you can power with power as well for instance i think you can power the uh well maybe not the steam quarry but there's a couple of the machines that i think you can power using power instead of steam i might be wrong on that but i'm, I'm fairly sure <laughs> it's been a little bit since we've played um neo tech so i can't exactly remember all the interactions but yeah i, I think the conversion of steam to eu is kind of a one-to-one -one type thing and that's why they use it a lot. So let's come back into here. Um, I did make all of the circuit components. This is just a matter of um, throwing things into the wire mill. So the way that the wire mill works is you put in the plate of whatever type of wire you're trying to make. So let's take copper, for instance. Um, it'll give you copper wire, which you can then put back into the wire mill to get copper fine wire. So it's basically just another crafting component. So as you see here, this takes copper fine wire, coal dust, and some paper. Of course, paper you can get by compressing sugar cane down, if you hadn't already known that. Known? <laughs> Node? <laughs> oh, goodness. If you hadn't already known that. Um, this is going to take a steel rod and some copper wire, rubber sheets, copper plates, which I'll I have a note on the rubber sheets here in a second, and capacitors, gold plates, and copper wire. So it's all fairly simple, um, and then they give you a little bit more after you complete that. Went ahead and made the analog circuit, and now we're going to go up through this side with the LV cables, the redstone battery, and the basic machine hole. Um, now the redstone batteries, this is something we also need to get into, is oh, these wandering traders. Wandering traders and the pillagers, I'm, I'm at my wit's end with them. <laughs> we're going to have to get this stuff called battery alloy um, ingots, which comes from battery alloy dust, which you can make in a mixer using lead and anemone. Anemone. Oh, anemone. Not generated, but can be obtained from the quarry. Do we, are we obtaining this from the quarry? <laughs> no, you have to use the electric quarry. What? That doesn't make any sense then. Oh, it goes from this. No, you need this to make this. I'm missing something, and I'm not sure what it may be. Alloy smelter? Do we have to go into the alloy smelter? I remember this. I just don't remember the first step. Large steam furnace, furnace, alloy smelter, blasting. No, because the alloy furnace, that that's power, baby. That's power. Macerator. Is there, not, is there another way to get anemone that I just don't know of? This is so... There's got to be something to this, right? This is not generated. Anemone tiny dust? Is it... Can we... Is there a... There's... What am I... Am I going crazy? <laughs> it's... He's not even mentioning it. Like, there's... There's nothing? Hold on. Okay, we're all good. So there are two methods, essentially, to finding this. It's in a quartz vein, which is something that we can find. Not generated, but can be obtained with the quarry. That's weird that it says that because there, there has to be a quartz veins somewhere throughout the world. People on the Reddit were, or Reddit, on the, um, this diamond, nickel. People on the Discord were saying it's in quartz veins located in the overworld. So if you find a quartz vein, you should also have anemone. That's titanium. Zinc. Zinc. Iron. Maybe I should mark this titanium, right? Titanium. Oh, titanium. Is it titanium? It feels wrong. Oh, that's right. Redstone. Iron. Quartz. Okay, well, I just placed a marker. 
Um, but can I see it? Yeah, it's right there. Okay, so let's run over there and I guess try to do that real quick. We have water in there. Let me get a bucket. I feel like I had a bucket. I do. Okay. Um, and we'll go ahead and refill our drill. I should probably drop some of the stuff back off here. It's like some of these cables, the coke dust, all that. All right. Let's go see if we can find some of this antimony. And then I'll go over the second way you can get it, which is probably the way that we should have done it. But it's okay, because I, I like to physically go and discover things and um, do the easy way second. Psych. But since this is so close, we might as well go check it out and see if uh, this is true. All right. Let's see. 60 meters in closing. Our speed boost does certainly help, though I will say sometimes in the base it can get a little bit annoying. All right, quartz sample. Do I, I do have my prospector's pick, so if I go down here, sure enough, there's some antimony. All right. Well, let's just uh, pick that up. And I guess that means I didn't have to go to the nether to find quartz either. I could have just found it in the overworld. Nifty to know. Nifty to know. So how far down we got to go here? Just keep going, going, going. <laughs> Surely we should be getting close. I didn't miss it on this wall. No. How far down are we? 30. Because I saw a regular orb anemone, so it's got to be here somewhere. Goodness gracious, we're down to 19. Come on, before we hit bedrock, baby. What? This is bedrock. You told me there was animony in here. Oh, I don't even have enough oomph to get out of this thing. Me like a like a filthy peasant. I'm having to block my way back up out of here. I'll have you know I feel some kind of degraded. All right. Ooh, still not high enough. Yeah, how far down did we go, man? Uh, give it a couple more, and I think we got this. Sun's also setting. Maybe we should have made this trip when it was okay. All right. Let's see, tell me we're close. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's there's two right here. If there's not any quartz down below these two, I will be insulted. I wasn't smart enough to carry a bed on me, I don't think. I just want to see the light. No way. Come on. <laughs> you pulling my chain here? You yanking my leg? You joshing me? What's a uh... zombie? All right. We'll go home real quick. Is there a wandering trader in my house? <laughs> I think there's an invisible wandering trader trying to hide out in my house. You busted, you son of a bitch. <laughs> a bauba a bauba sapling but i need nine of them i already made that mistake once where i bought a sapling from one of you guys and didn't realize that i needed a lot more it sounded like there was another wandering trader around here anyways throw all this stuff in there bam bam and might as well refill our water and let's see, it's over in that direction. I don't know why I ran all the way over there the first time. I should have done this. Woo! How close are we? 150 meters? B E A U T full. Okay. All right. Stop. Stop with the bouncing. Don't hold shift, by the way, when you're bouncing. You will take full fall damage, okay? 
case you didn't know now now you know uh, you know what i grabbed that bucket i didn't even put any water in it real smart chance empty buckets gonna help you all of nothing what what is going on here where's the uh where's the anemone i was promised quartz and anemone oh god that's a that's a dungeon that's a that's a that's a mine shaft is what that is so nothing would do what found in this area and what area are we talking about here bubs huh show me this area Why is it not? Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Well, two holes down. I don't know what to say. I guess if we go down this one and it's still not there, we're going straight through to through to uh, to bedrock, baby. All right, let's try. Let's try here. <laughs> let's try right here. A lot of soapstone. It's good. It means I can take infinite amounts of showers. JK, nobody lives in this world with me. I'm showering none. Uh, is that f iron? I didn't come for your iron, man. I came for the... What is going on here? Show me the goods. Show me the money. The quartz ore. The stuff I was promised. The thing that gets me is it says that it's in, like, normal stone, you know? If I do this. Like, it, it's showing normal stone. It's showing normal stone quartz ore. But then you, you, you dig, and you dig, and for what? For nothing. Oh, I'm out of, I'm out of, uh, I didn't bring any coal dust on me. Oh my goodness, I'm an amateur. Let's get all that in there. Let's get some of the lignite coal. Throw that in there. We will refill you with some water. Uh, can't really get a bucket from there. Go pay a visit to our pillager friends down here. Hello, boys. Yes, very angry as always. I expected, I expected this. And away we go. Still gonna make the hang glider. That's really just a matter of chopping up some cows, though. And I've, you know, I've just not, uh, not taken that time. So I have three holes in the earth here, and you're telling me not a single one of them has any quartz. This is another quartz sample. Tell me there's anemone over here. Let's try right here. I mean, I got nothing to lose. A little bit of time, maybe some self-respect, but other than that, nothing. <laughs> I thought this would be a fun and engaging episode where we built and we explored. But now we're just digging. We're just mining. Who would have thought in a game like Minecraft, one just shows up and digs blocks? Quite profound, actually. I don't mind having these slower parts in episodes. We don't always have to be doing industrial um, forward progression, right? Sometimes it is a matter of dig and ye shall find kind of thing. Maybe, I guess. <laughs> might might uh, be lying to you there because we're digging, but ye, ye is not finding. Yay. Me, carbonite. Finding some cool stuff. I just don't want to drop down into a fucking dungeon. Ah, quartz, you beautiful bastard, you. But, I, okay, you know what? Technically, that is um, that is normal quartz. But the anemone, the anemone, you're not passing that off on me. I don't see any regular anemone. This is all deep slate. It is nice to have though. I guess beggars can't be choosers. I'll just be happy that we have it in general, period. The end. 
Oh, I also need to make a dank storage. I think we're we're able to do that now. And that would okay, that's a little bit of a cave system. You may not know this, but I'm not a fan of cave systems. Um until I have like good armor and all that kind of stuff. Beautiful. This should be more than enough to get us going. And of course, making the electric um, quarry, that's that's gonna be a top top notch priority kind of thing anyways. So, cause I, I like having everything automated obviously as, as soon as possible. There we go. All right, so how much do we have? 16, that is not a lot. 18, technically. I guess we can keep digging around here a little bit, but I, I hate the idea of just wasting all the blocks that are kind of circling us and we're not able to pick up. Grab this last bit here. All right, good enough. Let's head on home. That didn't take too long. Now... Do we process this stuff the same way to a macerator and into another macerator? So yes, yes is the answer. All right, well, if, if a macerator is the key, then I have just the thing over here for you. Again, we'll have to do this in sets of eight, but that's okay, because I don't care anyway. I guess we can do quartz ore first. Now just tell me... This does into that, and then into quartz dust. Okay, all right, well. And then we can compress it back into quartz dust. Is there anything else that quartz is used for? Amethyst, prismarine, silicone. Oh, boy. That's it. Silicone. Now, I, oh, yeah, silicone batteries, ingots, and I'm pretty sure the plates. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Fun, fun stuff to be had. Let's get this put over here, because I don't think we have a thing of quartz. Let's do this. Insert. And that should be fun. And then it should. There we go. Auto output. All right. And then after the quartz gets done, let's do the anemone. Autonomy. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. So you'll have to excuse me. All right, cool. So that'll get us into this uh, battery alloy dust. And I like making discoveries on camera. Sometimes I like to come on here and know everything that I'm talking about. And sometimes it's kind of nice to discover together. So I'm happy to have gotten all these building blocks, though. I can't tell you how much I've been blowing through stone. So, all right. Taking a look back into the quest progression here, let's worry about getting some cables. So the cables should be pretty simple. It's just copper wire and some rubber sheets. Speaking of which, rubber is something that I needed to touch on. Um, in the last episode, we made this sort of rubber tree setup, and I said, oh, look, it seems to have drained all the sap. And it does, but then it kind of comes back. So as long as you leave these here, it will continuously fill with rubber sap, or I guess just sap in this case. And of course, we can export it from here. Eventually, we'll have it auto-exported, run into a furnace, then into a compressor, which makes us our rubber. Um, but for the time being, I just have some of it already built up, whatever, smelted down, processed, essentially. All right, cool. So we have the LV cables. Now we're going to need to get into the redstone battery, which is going to require a plate and four curved. So then let's go back to the factory. If you see anything that I've not mentioned on like, hey, I did this, and uh, you're curious about it, ask down in the comments below. Sometimes I forget to explain this, that, or the other. All right, so this should be on Anemone. It is now. And Anemone, we need the dust, right? We need the dust for this. Yeah, so let's just leave it in the dust form. We'll give it a little home over here, and we'll say export. And that should just go... Yeah, all into there. Cool. Back home because these Minecraft days fly. They say time flies when you're having fun, and this mod pack is a very fun. Okay, now you're just being creepy standing outside the window. Bro, get your get your llamas, get your get your shit in order, man. Okay? This isn't this isn't some circus where we just have don't mind my animals, where we just have wild animals running all about, okay? 
This is a calm and orderly space, my sir. My good, my good, good sir. All right, so then with antimony in here somewhere, it gets combined with, what did I say, lead? Antimony. Is it one-to-one? -one? It is a one-to-one. -one. Okay, cool. And then we'll go throw this in the mixer. Still need to get a mixer set up in the new base, but that's okay for now. We'll just use this one. Also, we need to get some, some steel upgrades on these things. So you can actually speed up the processing power of a lot of things just by using these steel upgrades. So one, two. That'll give us two of them. And the way these works is... Uh, Prill, prill. I was gonna say pretty and real at the same time, which gives us prill. Pretty simple. Um, let's wait for this to finish processing. So essentially you take your bronze machine, run it to a smithing table, throw both in and boom. And then you have a steel mixer, which essentially just processes things faster, and this works for all equivalent things. So you may have seen back over there, we had some steel compressors. Over here, we have some steel boilers. Um, they, they just work a little faster. All right, so again, let's do this. And yeah, there you go. Also, it wouldn't hurt to do probably a steel furnace, right? That could be good. Do, 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 do. Boom, boom. And the steel um, boilers, I believe they just have an increased output rate. So let's see. Produce up to 16. Yeah. So right now we're producing 48 um, EU per tick. Or steel. Uh, oh, no. Steel per tick. Or steam per tick, I mean. Goodness me. <laughs> All right. And then we'll throw this in here. And yeah, I mean, I think it goes faster. Hard to really tell on some of this stuff. All right, so what we needed like six pieces to make our first battery. We should get two stacks from this, so that should keep us good for quite some time. If six makes uh, one battery and we have two stacks, that's essentially like 20 batteries we can make or something like that. That's not too shabby. And you will end up making a lot of batteries and a lot of this... Uh, mix here but obviously we can't automate this until we get the next tier of quarry which is going to be the electric quarry which if i remember correctly is not necessarily close to the steel quarry so we might have a a bit of a ways to go so let's see battery and i believe it's the redstone battery that it wants us to make so yeah four curved and oh and it requires 10 cables specifically and one flattened so we'll just do one in there and to do four in there. I'm going through that in there. So if it wants ten, let's go ahead and get a stack of ten, and I'll actually just throw this into here, and that'll smelt ten or eight down at a time, and I can get another little stopper over here for ten. There we are. Then if I do this and that should be good to go I'm actually go and grab another one of these and i would like to upgrade the item put the item inputs on these to steel just so it can hold more so whenever i do manually input it kind of works a little better all right so that should be oh already processed down nice i'll take all of that and then I'm just going to slime sling my way back. I did try to set up to where I have access to the inventory from over there. But I think I'm going to need another inventory connector or something along those lines first. So that's why I keep coming back over here to this terminal instead of having just set one up at the other base. All right. So let's go here. Here. Oh, we're going to need 10 wire. So I need to... Need to smash the tin down. Let's see. Tin. All my smashy, smashy stuff's going to be over here, I guess. 
we do need to work on centralizing all of our machines because obviously right now I have some processing over here, some processing over there. That and there. And what? We just need like three, which I think is just one piece, but we'll wait for two. And this is fine because it's actually showing you the process of the steel wire mill, which... While it is very obvious, some people do like to see the actual steps of progression, so that's fine. Horrible sound, I know, but there we go. Oh, it only makes two, actually, so I'm glad it did bring two of those plates over here with us. Let's go make some cables. Um... That. And there we are. Redstone battery. Cool. So now we're to the basic machine hole, which is basically going to take two, two of those. And let's go ahead and do, 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 save that. See what all we need. So we're going to need a steel casing. Steel, we got plenty of this. I am just going to go ahead and make these really quick over here. Right, and then the only thing we should be missing is 10 cable and another one of those. Okay, cool. So with that, let's come over here and we'll make another battery real fast. This should be all good to go. We'll refill this real quick. And I don't have any more. Oh, yes. I forgot about my clay. We're going to need a lot of clay and um, the fire brick dust fire i'm pretty sure it's fire oh goodness overshot the hell out of that but that's oh okay all right so let's put four more in here and i'll go mac i'll go back and mass produce this stuff in the future but it's uh it's okay for right now while that's processing let's get our tin going in the wire mill Again, we need to centralize things, but this kind of happens when you're in the middle of, you know, moving bases over and all that kind of stuff. That is a really horrible noise. Like, whoever decided, yeah, let's have this as the, as the sound, curse you, because that is, that is nails on chalkboard, my friend. It's not fun. All right, so we have that, that, and then we just need Uno Moss Battery. And again, eventually all this will be a lot easier. But for the time being, using a slime sling, really not a bad way. The the most annoying part is how <laughs> over the moon it, it truly sends you. But that should be it there. And uh, once we get into netherite, we'll be able to make a way of accessing our storage wirelessly. So it won't matter where the um, access point is. Okay. Battery, battery, and machine hole. Let's try this again. Everything's cleared. Excuse me? <laughs> Maybe we need to make another 10 cable? I'm sorry. This, what? Is that a cat? Is there? <laughs> it's like my, my chest has a tail. Oh, goodness. All right. Um, so let's do this one there. That should definitely be enough tin cable. Please don't wrong me. Beautiful basic machine hole. And we should be on into a new chapter now. Which, yes, there's still a lot to this chapter we'll, we'll go back and um, work on, right? We don't have any of the XP storage stuff quite yet. Uh, but yeah, getting into the electric age means, well, all this fun stuff over here. But it also means we can eventually get into this plated backpack, which means, yeah, a long-awaited upgrade is is going to be beautiful. Oh, man. Still so much to do with this mod pack, which I, I do enjoy. 
stainless steel drill is yeah all the way over here so where where do you see the steel or the electric quarry rather where would that come into play at let's see laser engraver electrolyzer distillery oil drilling electric quarry okay so we need to get into blast furnace aluminum advanced machine hole that is where we get the electric quarry ores inf infinitum infinitum <laughs> all right ladies and gentlemen that is um exciting i was trying to think of the appropriate word there but i think exciting pretty much fills the spot for me for what i'm filling with this mod pack and um, everything in general let me know down below in the comments do you prefer when i do the processing stuff in person in video for instance if i was to come over here and do the setup of all the wires and all the cables on the back side of this is that something you want to see or more so like today where i'm saying this is this machine and we just have stuff piped over and not actually seeing all the spaghetti noodles because some people don't want to see this some people this kind of stresses out and i get that because you're like oh man i have to do all that when in reality no you don't have to do it like this you your factory could be huge spread out um if you want to look for better sort of more basic inspiration i'd actually recommend checking out our ftb neotech playthrough where it was kind of my first interaction with modern industrialization and so a lot of this stuff is done kind of a bit slower um so to speak but yeah um let me know about that and let me know what you think about the the base i've i've come to this realization that i kind of had my old base building habits coming from opolis ink bleeding into this mod pack with this villager setup because that's kind of got the the same shtick the same feel as the opolis ink base Sorry, losing my voice as we get towards the end. So that's why I've opted to kind of go towards this more steel, mechanical, industrial type look on the main building over here. And we'll kind of retrofit this one to fit in. But yeah, I'm looking to do, like I said, more of a factory type build. This is going to be where all of our quarries are laid out. And I'm trying to keep things very organized. But the thing with organization is it does always require, at least to some degree some bit of spaghetti noodling so let me know what you thought of the episode down below in the comments if you prefer it this way or if you just prefer me to do basically whatever feels natural with the information that i'm trying to present because that's typically what i do you know i try to give a little splice of every slice of life um <laughs> yeah anyways Thanks everybody for watching. Hope you did enjoy. Hope you've been enjoying the building in this mod pack as well as the automation and modern industrialization in general as that is kind of the center fold piece for all of this. If you have been enjoying, please be sure to leave a like down below, comment in the comment section for any of the previous points mentioned or if you have any questions as far as, you know, things I didn't explain or in general questions you may have about modern industrialization or the mod pack. Subscribe if you're new here. You want to see more awesome content from yours truly. That's that's me of course um share this out with friends family strangers down the street and random people you might meet at um at the car wash at the chipotle at the at the i was trying to think of another c word it's okay share it out <laughs> as for the usual i do hope you all stay safe stay awesome and stay crafting until next time you beautiful beautiful people peace out